Today is Sunday, September 29th, and 2024, yes, and there was a hurricane, Hurricane Helene, that struck on Thursday. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to come down here because, yes, I had, in one of my homes, I had four inches in there, but luckily it was a smaller home, and, uh, I, I had prepared the garage pretty well. I only lost a couple items, the washer and dryer, namely. Um, but my bicycles, my car had a little bit of water get in there. I can't believe it because I got so far away, but um, the surge was just that phenomenal. So I came to Fort Myers Beach and there is a lot of damage around Times Square. Not when I say damage, there wasn't really that much damage at all, but there was high sand, sand everywhere. You know, they were able to scrape it away in the last couple of days, so I'm glad I didn't come earlier because I probably would have been forbidden from coming to the beach. But, uh, I remembered everything. Um, I'm parked here at this little park that I parked last week. It seems to be the only place where you can park for free stuff. And uh, it says as long as you're, um, hold on, <laughs> gotta adjust the camera, yeah. It says as long as you're, um, I don't know what the sign says, but it's exactly what I'm doing. If you're exercising or whatever it was, let me see what the sign says again. Uh, I put it in the air in the back tire, front tire is still fine. Uh, let's see. It says here, dust till dawn, no camping, loitering. Oh, I'm doing everything. So there's, there's a sign here at the top. These are, they, they just put these new signs in because they probably saw my car parking here last week and they're like, oh, someone's taking advantage of free parking? <laughs> Pretty much this free parking is for uh, government office. I mean, not really. There's there's the uh, Fort Myers Beach Aquatics, uh, not, I don't know about Aquatic Center, but the, the, the community pool. See, it says, parking for Bay Oaks recreational users only. Bay Oaks recreational users only. Bay Oaks Recreation. I just hope I don't get any $77 sign. All right. So, and anyway, there's a little park, and then there's the park next to and it. And it doesn't say no parking or no fine, so I'm fine. Anyway, here's the uh, Footballers Beach Public Library that I would love to make it to a casino. Uh, I don't know if it's open or not. Gates open. Yeah, if the gates open, let's go in. So it is. There is an extreme high tide going on right now. And it's, it's kind of sad, you know. <laughs> I really wish I could say, "Hey, low tide." I went on. Um, Pink Shell has got some really good um, live uh, uh, camera shots of the beach. And um, gate closed. Gate closes when library is closed. Well, I guess library's open. So it doesn't show it down here, but the, the, there was tons of sand everywhere. Uh, Times Square especially, there was the, the, the road had about a foot of sand on top of it. Um, the sad thing is that when I passed by Margaritaville, I saw that Margaritaville's pool was completely filled with sand, completely. And there was like 50 people digging, digging, uh, digging the pool out. And I'll tell you, the pool is ruined. <laughs> Ruined. It's got it's got sand in the in the plumbing. It's gonna be about a week minimum, maybe two weeks to get that thing operational, and it won't be as nice as it was. Uh, they may have to write off the entire pool. It's sad. See, you have, you have to raise the pool about 15 feet up. And uh, if I owned, there's a resort that I haven't planned in my mind. I just wish I'd get some financial backers, so they don't want to put my money. I don't want to put my any of my own money into this. <laughs> um, it's just uh, you know this. Trump was in there. If I can get maybe one of his relatives to help me out, the resort would have to have gambling, or at least arcade-style gambling. Then it would make money. But this road is Sterile Boulevard. Sand filled up all the sewers, so there's no more drainage. So if we were to have another hurricane or any type of heavy downpour, this this whole Sterile Boulevard because it's designed by uh, diversity and equity inclusion hires, uh, this would flood. 
and, and because you know the old road the old road was a was a a crescent arc and, and the water uh, the road was higher than the uh, surrounding ground here the the, the the idiots who built this road built it so that the water flows into the middle of the road i mean how dumb is that so if there's a failure if there's a failure on uh the uh, the sewer, which there is, it's all full of sand. Uh, I don't even think any, I don't think any of the sewers work here. Look at this. The water pushed away the Jersey barriers. So because the water pushed away the Jersey barriers, people are parking here now. Nice. You see that? These Jersey barriers are, are completely foolish as it is. Completely foolish. And all they look some of those some Jersey barriers are pushed way back there. So you can see the water there about. See 100 yards over there. <laughs> I really wish to. Uh, there's some Jersey berries over there, about 100 yards. Yeah, you can see it through the pine trees. Look, 100 yards down there. There's wheelbarrow. That's about 40 yards, and maybe it's 150 yards. <laughs> Good job, Hurricane Helene. Yeah, and that was only a Category One when it passed by us. It quickly accelerated to a Category Two, Category Three by the time it got to the Tampa area. So, which is sad, but. Hey, I'm glad because uh, I'm, I'm not really glad I got four inches of water. I thought that was ridiculous. But you see, if you live here in Fort Myers Beach, you have to have your elevation has to be a minimum. I'm telling you, to, to be safe and sound, to go on vacations and not worry about your house here, you have to have 20, 20, 22 feet raised above sea level. You know, for those, uh, that's, that's a 15 foot. Uh, storm surge plus seven to nine foot waves on top of that and you have to have at least eight stilts made of pre-stressed concrete that go down about 50 feet in the ground and uh, your foundation has to be at least three feet thick to be able to withstand the pounding of those waves and to support your structure and yeah it has to be steel steel rebar uh, welded reinforced one inch one inch rebar or at least half inch, you put it that way. Um, see, this is the old fire department. That one survived, but you look at the driveway, it got ripped. So, the wave action down here, I didn't, I didn't know how, uh, how fierce it was because the pink shell beach cam, live beach cam that I was looking at, went blank. And I was like, uh oh, but this is the first hurricane. I didn't lose power in any of my houses. So, uh, See this this uh, fresh catch uh, junkanoo. This is still an excellent retail spot even after the hurricane. So the hurricane took off a little bit more, but this place is still standing. So we're gonna have to drive to the beach. Um, again, it's a severe high tide right now, but the berm. Was look, 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 even the barrier here got washed away. So, hey, how nice! The driveway is a little. Look at all the sand here. You can see the, the berm is gone. As I was telling you, we only had a, a Category One hurricane offshore, and the, the the storm surge totaled. I guess if you want to count the river and everything, it was about six and a half feet. Actually, I take that. I take that back. It was uh, almost seven and three quarters. Seven and three quarters. Oh man, I can smell it. Oh, so ooh, let's see how far I can bicycle here. This is amazing. The nice thing about it is that the, the berm filled in some of the low-lying area here, because it was kind of like a, a lagoon back there. Now the berm was completely pushed back and gone. Nice. I hated that berm. Oh, this is smelling really fierce over here. I see even a boat hole. So there's, oh, I gotta be careful, it could be nails. Nails and sharp glass. I'm gonna bicycle over here, but this is uh, the Hurricane Helene went through on Thursday. So today is Sunday, Sunday after the hurricane. So we're gonna see. If I see there's an opening, I have to bicycle up there, I will. I see there's like a little opening. Let's see if I can get up there. I don't wanna be dropping through too many seashells or nails or, you know, just. After a hurricane, I'm telling you, everything has become flotsam and it's got nails or glass sticking out. I see I'm going to just puncture a tire. All right. That's another thing about driving, too. 
driving on the roads, there's, there's nails and glass everywhere right now. You have to be really careful. So this is a high tide. So the berm is gone. <laughs> uh, let's see, what other things I noticed? Let's see, on the way to Fort Myers Beach, um, the, uh, the old fishmonger building, that thing is completely gone. Now, I think that that was actually hauled away, but the waves could have done it in too. I'm not sure. That's completely gone. There's no building there. It actually looks refreshingly nice. Look at all this debris. This is all mangrove. Uh, mangrove, that's what these, these, these long, these are mangrove seeds. And maybe they'll germinate here. We'll have a big mangrove grove here. Let's see what else. There were a couple um, mobile homes on Little Cerro Island that looked battered by the storm. Um, Fort Myers Beach, I can tell that, well, where Beach Connection used to be, that's completely gone. I'm trying to think if, if that was torn down before the hurricane or not, but definitely I noticed it's gone. It's, here's a big piece of driftwood, not that one, this one. They're gonna, they're gonna have to wait a couple of high tides. And this garbage is gonna, just gonna have to sit here. Wow, it's all mangrove. So some mangrove really took it, took it on the chin for all this to be offended. But this stuff, believe it or not, this tidal moraine will be a good um, dune builder. So even though it wiped out the berm that was here, they'll start building dunes around this. More wind, a little more, a couple more tides. Hello. So again, this is high tide. Now, what I did notice when I was looking through the uh, pink shell, and 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 it's still pretty firm here. So there was a high tide. The tide may have been even higher. It may be receding. I should have looked at the tide clock when I was there at the Fort Myers Beach Library. I forgot to look at it. Thinking that well, high tide, high tide. I didn't think I'd be able to get on the beach at all. Hello. Hi. My camera just terrible. All right. So looks like a little inlet was forming here. Santa Ball, I can see it pretty clear. So the humidity's down. There's some kind of taking a chance there. First board, I don't know what that was. Hello. Somebody picking up a whole bunch of stuff. It could be valuables out here, you never know. I mean, it could be money. Find anything good? Yeah. Find any money? <laughs> no money. Oh, wow. Garbage. It's pretty nice. Has headphones on. Oh, I just passed a uh, an angel wing. See, the the thing is, is that if you find an angel wing and you find the pair to the angel wing, that brings you good luck. I was just talking to her there. So this is a not so good angel wing, but if I found its pair. Then that would, superstition has it, that would be good luck. She's doing a good job at the end of the beach, too. Well, my feet are aching and my knees are aching by mopping and scrubbing my floors. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm out here on a bicycle, but you know, I have to, you know, if I don't do it, I'll be upset in my head that I wasn't able to do it. So I gotta force myself. Most thing you have to really worry about is not really the wind. You have to worry about the storm surge and the waves. So people put the storm surge sh shutters on their windows. You know, it may make them warm and cozy, knowing that uh, a flying. I mean, when is there a flying piece of wood? That, that only if there, if it's 170 miles an hour, are you going to get flying pieces of wood? You know, and rarely does that occur. Okay, you may say, oh, there could be a tornado. Okay, tornado may get may get a microburst that strong, but most tornadoes, they 
they believe it or not, they bounce along, and they, if a house comes along, they bounce on the top of it. They don't really, you know, it's not like the ones in Oklahoma that are like bulldozers that pull right through your house. No, these, these kind of like hop, like, like happy-go-lucky hopping tornadoes. <laughs> so, they'll take off your roof, but that's all they're going to do. They're not going to send a piece of plywood through your window. No, they'll just take off your roof. They hop down here. They hop from tree to tree to your roof, and then they take off your roof. here I'm seeing though they're they're dressed for uh all right so this is a nice stretch people are not holding back if they're spending four hundred dollars a night okay here's the Neptune Inn this is a great place um it looks like it withstood the hurricane just fine its pool probably is coated with uh sand but that's actually a good thing because uh uh while while that place waits now they don't have to worry about a fence to fence off the pool because their pool is filled with sand. That's usually the option they give you. Either fence off your pool or fill it with sand. So the hurricane filled it with sand because the berm is gone. I'm looking up and down this beach. The berm that they charge everyone, probably all these property owners are on the beach here, maybe even the whole beach. They probably charge them between fifty and hundred thousand dollars each. And now that was all wasted. Hello. So you think Fort Myers Beach is gonna ask for another? Seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars, knowing that this was a uh, this was this was not even a hurricane. I mean, the hurricane hit here and left, and what we got was the tailwinds, the tailwinds of Hurricane Helene. Not even the hurricane. The hurricane was over two hundred miles away. We got the tailwinds in one little feeder band, and that's what caused all this damage. That's what caused the high winds. That's because of my house to flood. I mean, after the hurricane, I was celebrating because my, uh, my my house had no damage. No flood, no roof, nothing. And then, uh, as I was cleaning up one of my homes, I went back to the other one. The water was rising. I'm like, oh, no. And when I said cleaning, I was cleaning the outside. And I, I, I used spray foam and tried to uh, protect. But that just made everything worse. And... The water only ro rose six inches above the threshold, and I got four inches inside. Wow. And that was because one of my big sliders in the back, there was a micro hole there that I wasn't able to plug, didn't find it in time. And then you can't, you can't spray foam underwater. It's too late. And uh, I had plastic there, too. That one little hole caused all the four inches of water. Because the water hung around so much, it, it hung around from... See, the, the water came around 7.45 p.m., which is the worst time you can come. And then it hung around until 3. So, um, I was doing so good. I only had like an inch of water, inch of water, inch of water, right up until about 12 midnight. And then all of a sudden it went to 2 inches. And then it went to 3 inches. Right around 12.30, that was the worst. 4 inches, I'm like, oh, I'm dead. I said, high tide's at 2 a.m. I said... How much more am I gonna take another foot? And then uh, it just started receding. I'm like, great. But I was bailing like crazy. I must have bailed enough water in a bucket to fill up, uh, I'd say four Olympic-sized swimming pools. I was bailing so fast. A gallon, let's say a gallon up, pour it in the sink. Reach down, a gallon. And I had, I had a low painter's, plastic painter's uh, pan so it can get Maybe it wasn't a gallon, maybe it was a half gallon every pan, but I was, but I was sleeping it up really fast. Love. Hello. So, people are looking at the seaweed here, but there's a tractor. This is a Glonic coming up. You know, I can still see in the surf there's a lot of seaweed, so. It's going to take another two or three days for that seaweed to come on shore. And then they'll tractor it. If they're smart, they'll make it into a mound where the sand can blow sand around it and make a dune out of it. Forget about those burns. But it looks like up until this point, I mean, this is high tide, so the beach is pretty big right now. 
I want to check out Pink Shell if I can get down there. I see that the dredge is not offshore. You see, they just scrape this area. So. Tractor. Oh yeah, he's picking up jet skis. He's kind of wet. I'm still surprised only a lot of people down here, and I'm glad to see that that the Lana Kai is still open for business. And they got sand. They got sand in there. I mean, if the, if the water was seven feet, uh, seven three quarter feet surge that's above mean high tide that's that's where my head is right now on the bike that's how high the water is so where the camera angle is add another two feet to that you get the height of the water and it has to have gone that high because look at uh, it's sad but margaritaville is the biggest loser this is margaritaville look at all those sand dunes over here see those big mounds of sand that came out of their pool thing is scooping up and dumping over there. So whether that's some of the seaweed, but most of that sand from the pool, that's some old berm sand. Well, this, there was a berm here. People were lounging on top of the berm. The berm was an additional uh, three to four feet above the beach level. Now the berm's gone. The berm is inside their pool. See, that is, uh, that was not a smart decision because had a warm and cozy feeling about the berm, and all the water did was push that berm right into their pool. And if there was no berm here, they may not have gotten the sand in their pool. You see, they have a break wall here. The break wall would have held back the sand because the berm was covering the break wall. The water went, you know, it used the sand, and the sand was like a slope, and it just slowed right over the beach. The water went right into their pool and they got uh, four to five feet of sand in their pool. I mean, this sand here is really soft. This must be some of the sand that's coming in from the pink shell dredging or from offshore. I'm just glad that Margarita is not as low as this. So. Tractors made these ruts. It's, it's uh, here we go. I guess I was on seven now, but two. All right. More like it. Get some, of the, get some of the attractions here. So be, no one can obviously go in the pool of. Uh, Margaritaville. That's one of the biggest draws to Margaritaville. They can't go in the pool. And I doubt they'll be able to go in the pool the next two weeks because all the plumbing is backed up the sand too. They're going to have to uh, uh, pressure vacuum that out. Hello. So they're going to have to enjoy the, the brackish seawater here. Some water. big mounds of sand over here. That's from scraping a sterile boulevard because the uh, the drainage is uh, also full of sand. They'll never be able to get that out. So I kind of want to come back this way. But the amazing thing is it, it eroded. It's high tide, it's hard to say, but right by where Lanakai and the uh, Fort Myers, the, the, the the ruins of the Fort Myers Beach Pier, it took away a lot of beach there. There was beach there at high tide. Uh, now there's no, there's no tide, but that's what happens. The Fort Myers Beach, it changes every now and then. That's, that's the nice thing about coming here. You know, never see the same beach, it changes. You know, two months from now, there'll be beach there again. The, uh, the remains of the Fort Myers Beach Pier act like a wave break, so, it allows sand to pile up around there. It's probably, it's probably the best naturally made wave break that there is. Naturally, I say because uh, even though humans de designed it, nature has been maintaining it 
since uh, Hurricane Ian destroyed it. Hold on, we gotta drive a little closer to the water. Alright, oh, the beach is a lot firmer over here. Nice. Now let's see. This is high tide, so driving over there, even though it gets wet, it probably was a high tide over there. It was, it, it did minimal compacting. So there was fencing all around this. The, the Hurricane Helene blew away the fences, so. And uh, I'm surprised. I can see it got undermined a little bit more. It's, it's, it's collapsing more and more uh, down towards uh, sea level. So, um, all right, looks like these people are gonna have to complain though if I cross the construction zone. So I'm gonna have to go over to this. Get these really cute looking bobcats are. I mean, there's a John Deere there. It's a really nice toy. This is kind of firm actually. Hold on, maybe I could buy some. I'm still thinking old pre-hurricane that this is uh, this is going to be too soft right now. It's nice and flat. Right Up in some soft sand. Oh, oh. If I did a pop of wheelie, I could have made it. All right, they're probably going to complain. Yeah, it looks like this driveway wore away a little bit. Oh, now they got a big. Big caterpillar. Oh, he's back up into the palm tree. That palm tree's gonna be toast. That thing backs up into it. It's got a pillar thing. Got a big dump truck there up there too. Look at everything. You got the little kabutas, the little bobcats, and you got the big stuff. And they're they're dumping that in the school. That's right next to the uh well. So I don't see the Hershey's, so a lot of the trailers that were here were washed away. Or at least they took them off the beach, smart. And look at this, there's a little lake here, Times Square. Maybe this is Times Square Lake now. No, they used to see. Let's see, yeah, all the all the sewers are clogged, so yeah, this water's not gonna go away. And because they built it so that all the water flows into the middle, it's pretty stupid, but that's the way they did it. Now you gotta get through here with a bike with me. They're gonna redevelop this. Wow. Stupid. Spring of 2024, they're gonna start. Yep. Oh, 2024 is coming, Don. They haven't started rebuilding the pier yet. Um, it looks pretty firm over here still. That's just little. Looks like they just dumped. Alright. So I'm looking down the beach, and um, it looks like Hurricane Helene removed all the obstacles to bicycling down the beach. So thank you again, Hurricane Helene. You got rid of those jersey barriers. So maybe people can park over there again. Uh, brought the attention that whoever built the Star whoever built the Star Boulevard did a horrible job. And that was whenever they did that five years ago, it really sunk. It's nice down here right now. There's not that many people, so even though there's no more berm, berm is totally gone. Totally gone. We're back to old Fort Myers Beach. <laughs> and uh, Lynn Hall Park looks closed, so, um, you know, so it's pretty sad. So all the businesses here in Fort Myers Beach are probably all ruined. We're gonna we're gonna bicycle down some of the, the, the businesses and see if if any of them are left standing. Here, but this is pretty uh, traumatic. Oh, it looks like the shelling here is pretty good. Oh, here's a cone shell. Look, hold on. This is a rare shell. I don't know why they didn't pick it up. It's an alphabet cone. There goes my pocket. So, here is. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, I just. Oh, I'm high stepping it. Hold on. Um, there's a big left handed well. It's not great though, it's it's alive. Let's see it has a foot in there. It's broken off a little bit. Still, it's pretty interesting. People are picking up some seashells here. I see a lot of nice seashells here. But look at this big olive shell. Yeah. Olive 
shells are naturally naturally polished. Look at that. It's a gorgeous shell. You don't have to shellac them or anything. They're naturally polished like that. And when I find big ones like that, I put them in my pocket. Oh, here's a worm shell. These are bad. Oh, uh, no, it's not worm. It's seaweed. That was a worm shell. Those are rare. Good seashells, this area. People are filling up big bags. Right there, that was the best seashell. See, there's a cove here now. Where there's a cove, just like down by uh, Publix on Fort Myers Beach, this is a cove. So the uh, the longshore currents kind of converge in this area and they dump all the seashells here. But there was definitely erosion here because. Um, there was a berm here. The berm is gone. Now this is interesting. This piece of land, land here, was not that high. But after Hurricane Helene, look at all the sand that dumped up there. Nice. You don't have to pay for it. You got all that sand for free. This area, though, they lost a lot of sand. Look at the erosion. And uh, that Edison house, or whatever it was called, uh, yeah, the pool area, lost all that sand sad but that's so far the biggest damage I've seen so far. The structure itself is pretty good. I forgot the bicycle over here because there's so much seaweed over there. Hello. Hello. So let's go over to pink shell because I saw pink shells uh, pools look, looking fine after the storm. So I want to see if that's because I think I don't think there was a big burn. There, there was a little burn in front of Pink Shell, but their their uh, their beach scans show their pools fine, both all of them. So it could have been that because Pink Shell was at a glance, it's kind of like a curve, curving towards the north. It didn't get the the full fury of the seven foot and three quarter seven and three quarter foot storm surge. Look, this thing got pulled out of the water. This is actually the dredge pipe. Wow. Yeah, that's where it sucks sucks everything. That was, that was pushed on shore by Hurricane Helene. Wow. This is kind of nice. This is the first time I'm bicycling on the quote, quote, new beach. <laughs> Thank you, Pink Shell. See, uh, town of Fort Myers Beach. You guys did a great job over here. Yeah, it's enjoyable to bicycle over here. A little driftwood. You can clean up the beach for all the seaweed. But besides that, uh, the hurricane compacted the sand kind of nice. Hello. And, and this is uh, the Best Western Plus. So this had a narrow beach before the hurricane. Now the beach is 50 yards out. It only had about 20 yard beach. And it looks like their pool held up well because they have a, a very high a raised pool, the Best Western Plus. Again, I would love to make that into a casino. Their ground level, the way that they made it, um, it looks like it was also raised almost six to seven feet. So I'm not sure if the, the ground units got plowed or not. But they were working over here. Uh, last weekend, dredging when I was here. So, but the berm just ended up to be extra sand to be pushed inland onto the Cerro Boulevard. There's nobody down here. I'm looking at Pink Shell. They have their umbrellas on the beach, so Pink Shell is open. Um, this this dredge pipe is like um, I, I think it's. I think it's the uh, two foot. It could be three. I don't know about three foot. It's at least two feet. And it, it's, it's, it acted like a uh, a barrier. So the sand gave way, but the pipe did not. So um, this pipe protected some of the uh, residences. I see a big mounds of sand. Oh, shoot. I just ran over a pen. I hate those pen shells. I see big mounds of sand off of... Uh, Sterile Boulevard, not Sterile, um, 
Yeah, it's terrible, right? So, so yeah, the beach, the, the, the road there got a lot of sand. Okay, cool. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Looks like we'll be coming back on the road for this area. I'll come back on the beach around the, uh, uh, the uh, Best Western Plus. This is where the pipe goes out. So I don't see any red books out there. I don't even see big, like floating pontoon moors or any any indication that there that there is or still is any dredging boats out there. Or just markers where to fish. Maybe maybe all that sand was removed because a hurricane could do that. You take that whole sandbar out there, and within three or four hours, it's moved. It's gone. Or it could take that sandbar and make an island out of it again. And they're probably jumping for joy that they have all the sand on the beach and another island. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is I'm looking at Sandoval right now and I see a really big beach right near the Sandoval Lighthouse. And it's sad that I can't bicycle over the causeway at the moment, but I'm seeing an enormous beach. It is very low humidity. I've unfogged my glasses. I'm even looking now without my glasses, and I see a white sand, a big, huge beach right in front of the lighthouse. So sand got a lot, of, got an increase in sand. Pretty large burst. It's sad that they did all that work and making that burn, their burn's gone. Thank God, because you know what? Fort Myers Beach is not about a burn. The best the best way is, is to let the energy flow. You know, if anything, you want to build your house on stilts like these hotels here. Put them on stilts and let the energy flow underneath and buy. If you put a burn and you you uh, restrict that energy and the storm is building towards you, that energy gets retained into the next wave. And if it hits that berm again and it's deflected, then both of those waves energy are now retained and then added to the third wave. So it gets like a sledgehammer getting worse and worse. So it finally blows that berm away after 30 seconds. It doesn't take that long. And then you have super energy hitting the next structure, whatever it hits. Once that berm goes after uh, whatever, 30 seconds, then the next wave that goes penetrates past that berm, hits with unbelievable force, causing it a lot, causing the destruction a lot worse. But I don't think people here are engineers, but they are engineers. They're just a textbook, uh, you know, they're one page ahead of the, the uh, teachers and the teachers are you know, dumbfounded as it is. They don't even know why they're teaching. I mean, they know why they're teaching, but they don't know why they have to teach because they don't know the subject. And so they, they graduate students that don't know the subject either because you have to have practical hands-on experience in teachers teaching. And they don't have that because they don't pay and they don't care really. And it's sad, but that's why we need to defund all federal funding to be no public funding of schools whatsoever. It should all be private. If you want an education, it's up to you. It should be up to the sixth grade, and I'm not even saying public funding, but up to the sixth grade, um, and that's it. After sixth grade, when you're 12 or 13 years old, it's time to work. If you are financially well off, then yeah, you should be able to pay your private schooling. In the olden days, it worked well. All right, so Bob Witch Point. Um, looks like it's about the same. There was a berm here. Berm has been, is, berm has been refactored into the beach. Um, but it looks like 
high tide here. There's no, there's not much more. So, oh, that's cool. There's not much more uh, after this breakwater. So I'm still looking over at Sanibel. And the Cozo Islands look okay too. And uh, it looks like a lot of sand was added to uh, um, Punta Rasta. That's one place I got to check out. Um, Bunchy Beach. It looks like they gained a little bit of sand, but not much. But Punta Rasta looks like they gained a lot of sand. So I'm gonna go back this way. We're gonna, See, should I go back on the beach? Mm. Now we want to check out Stroke. We have to check out the hurricane damage before they, uh, they, they fix everything. So we'll go back a little bit on the road. Oh, wow, this has to be three inches off. Alright, so this was the old farm. Uh, I guess there's a, a fleeting influence left. Soft sand. Hello. I didn't intend this to be a long video because I have uh, Well, I'm not going to mow the lawn today because it's still kind of wet. I'll wait till this day. I'll give everything a couple days. Because it really rained big time yesterday morning. That ruined garage selling for me. I mean, couldn't, couldn't go garage selling. I had to go this morning garage selling. There's only three garage sales. I only videotaped two of them. Sad. I spent 50 cents. That was really sad. They had a PS3 uh, at the, the yard sale, but the lady was just charging so much, and I'm not selling. I'm not. I have two PS4s. I can't even sell. So a PS3, <laughs> you know, she was trying to sell a classic Atari for thirty dollars, and you know, it's about market price. I don't know. I'm not paying market price for stuff that I don't want. <laughs> I need a washer and dryer. My washer and dryer took a, a one-foot plunge in the water. So that is something that I use quite often. I need to I get back home after this ride. I'm going to be hunting for a used washer and dryer quality. And I, don't, I don't mind. And the washer and dryer I have um, that survived Hurricane Ian, and they weren't really, they worked. They, they weren't really working perfectly. The washing machine would, you know, wash okay. I turned, I, I basically had it on the highest setting. You know, spin max, hot max, everything. I did all my wash, and it seemed to be do, do good. I mean, I, that's, you know, let's face it. Do, do you know, guys, do you, do you do delicates and medium? And no, you set it for one setting. As long as it washes, it washes. I was putting baking soda in the wash, too. But now it's flipping the circuit breaker, so you know. Huh. I, I do have one extra motor. I could look and see if it's a motor. If it's a motor, not a circuit board, I might be able to fix the washing machine. You know, the washing machine comes first. You need to wash something dry. Here in Florida, I can put it outside on a clothing line. Line, it will dry in the daylight in no time. My problem is that. It's still a rainy season, and uh, it could dry. It rains up and come, and then bingo, now it's wet for the whole night because it doesn't dry. It doesn't dry during nighttime hours. You have to wait till the sun comes up. Um, this disgusting house here is still there. We didn't knock it down yet. Looks like Pink Shell has got themselves. I don't really want to bicycle on the sidewalk because there's a lot of debris there. But I'm very cognizant looking down. I don't want to drop my nails either. Every, every hurricane that goes by, usually there's tons of nails. Primarily because roofs got ripped off. Yeah, I can smell hot dogs. Something is cooking. Oh, thank you. So, Big Shell is uh, doing some business here. We have a nice, I have a nice headwind at the moment. I'm sweating like a dog, though. So it's uh, humidity's down, but it must be about 94, 95 degrees out right now. Um, when I got down here, it was uh, a little after 12 noon, so it's probably about one o'clock now. So I got a lot of, I 
get home. I gotta make the garage selling video. I gotta make this beach blasting video. I have to mop the house. Again, I mopped it twice already. This is third time. I got pine saw and bleach. I'm mix that two together. Hopefully, I won't inhale it, but I'll do a nice scrubbing of the house. And the footers, the floorboards. And that reminds me, yeah, I have to, once I get the inside done, I gotta take the I raised all my power tools in the garage four feet up. I built a shelving four feet high, three feet wide, 12 foot long. I put that in the back of my garage. I put all my power tools, my gasoline, my air compressor, my weed whackers, my 40 volt Ryobis, um, my pressure washer. Everything was raised out of harm's way. It only had a foot of water in the garage. So that, that was one success story. And that I learned the hard way. You don't want to have you don't want to survive a storm only to have all your your uh, power tools destroyed. You know, power tools, I mean, the lawnmower alone. I, I had two lawnmowers. Um, that would be like $400 each if that was lost. So they both survived. Now, one thing that did potentially lose was I had a can of gasoline that was floating in the water. Who knows if it got contaminated or not. Um, so that's something I'm going to have to... You know, I don't want to pour water into my gas tank. So um, I'm probably going to have to pour the gasoline out first into a clear container and see if there's a separation. If there is a separation, then yeah, there's water in the, in the fuel. I'll pour it in there and let it settle for a day. Or worst thing, worst comes to worst, I could pour it, I could put it in a container, a separate container, put a little bit of salt in there, mix it around. The salt will bond with the water and then just pour the gasoline or the uh, the alcohol, the gasoline, whatever, whatever comes free because the salt will bond with the water. Probably already uh, already bound with the water, you know, being brackish. So I probably can pour it to a clear flask if it separates. Gasoline will, will be on top. Just siphon gasoline and alcohol will be on top. I can just siphon that off. Right. So these nice homes. They uh, got some got a, got a scratch. The smart thing is that most of the air conditioners I see are raised uh, 15 feet above ground. So that was smart. So here's the Best Western Plus. We should go back to the beach through here. See, all their fences are gone. They had fences here. The fences were removed by the storm. You can see over here on the left-hand side, that's where the fences are. Yeah. This pool fence is gone. That pool still has water in it. That's amazing. I thought it would have, like, three feet of sand. And this road, for the most part, still has sand on it, but not as, as much as it used to. You see, that's, that's where the sand was. You can see the plow came through. One foot of sand over the sidewalk had to plow. So there was one foot of sand over this road. You see. And the nice thing is that if you own this property over here, there was some low-lying property here. Now it's all filled in with sand. <laughs> so uh, you, you, your property now is worth more because after Hurricane Ian, it left some voids here. Now the, 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 the canals in the back bay here, they're all full of sand. So they're gonna have to dredge those canals. In. And who knows if boats moored, if they, if they experience any damage. Look at this little, you see this big concrete thing. The drains aren't doing anything because they're all full of sand. It's just completely, Completely silly how they built this road. This road should be higher. There should be no curbs here. The road should be higher, letting the water flow off the road. And the way they have it designed is when idiots uh, get together and design something, and they they make it so silly, so stupid that the taxpayer now has to not only pay again, but has to pay for the uh, restoration. Has to pay to fix the problem that it caused right now, and you have to you have to rip it up and rebuild a new one. So, you have to pay uh, three times. First for the bad, the bad decision, and 
then now you have to pay to fix the problem that the bad decision caused, and then you have to fix, you have to rip it up and fix it correctly. And if they don't fix it correctly, you're just going to be paying a ton more money each time. So Lynn Hall Park still has a foot of sand. There's a lot of signs that are, you can see they're sticking up low out of the ground, which means that they're buried about a foot. So people are parked over here because they were able to scrape this area first. I don't know if Lynn Hall Park is closed or not because... Oh yeah, there's some trucks blocking. Oh yeah, there's some uh, minor barricades here. This makes it kind of fun with a mountain bike to go over these sand dunes. <laughs> Well packed because the car's right over this. It's kind of packed. It. People are parking over here, but I'm not sure if that's legal or not. But people are doing it. So the law enforcement is. And the sad thing is that uh, is that surf style. They were just finishing this building over here. I don't know if they got any sand inside it or not. Let's go down. Let's check out the uh, St. Paul's Boulevard. Oh, yeah. Uh, Way to do it. These businesses look like they held up okay. Let's go down the sidewalk. So there's still about two to three inches of sand here on the sidewalk. Susie Q's Tiki Bar. That uh, took it on the chin. Tropical Sunset still has its burnt out shell left to uh, admire. The Ocean Alley Seafood and Beach Bar. Uh, again, there's still about two, two inches of sand down here. It gets less and less the farther you get from the beach. With the police walking. Show. You can tan, doing some business, so they're alright. Shipwreck store. Probably have a shipwreck sale going on. Big decks, salty semen. Who that is? It's open. And they made a paved parking lot over here. That's interesting where the old, old hotel used to be. That's interesting. Looks like they're working in this corner business right here, over to the right. I hear something in there. Yeah, we should go down that way and check it out. All right. I'm gonna turn around. Water over road. Yeah. It's good if you're looking for real estate to come at a, a time like this. So you can t check and see where the potential flooding issues or the uh, structural design of the buildings you can see if they're if they're meant to withstand a hurricane or not now's the time to check out your real estate in case you want to buy a business down here you don't want to get caught blindsided after you spend a million dollars to get a business up and running and you're starting to you know you're starting to make some cash flow and all of a sudden a hurricane comes along and wipes you out this old 430 old St. Carlos Boulevard I like that but uh, that would have to just be a real estate office. Okay, so Wahoo Willie's. They were the first restaurant to open after Hurricane Ian. And, uh, so you have a restroom that says for pa patrons only. And yeah, I smell the, the shrimp and the fish there. Yeah, they're open for business. I see people are drinking, there's music. Pretty awesome. Now this Snug Harbor, look at this. They built all this tiki, this tiki walkway. That is impressive. This tiki walkie, walkway wasn't here for a while. This is new. Looking gorgeous. It looks like nothing happened to it. That's good. And this area right here has a nice like little putting green we could relax on or bicycle on. <laughs> this is nice. This whole area is nice. And then this place is open now. Looks like nothing happened down here. 
I don't see any evidence of sand here or inside the restaurant. This is awesome down here. And then Yo Taco is the... Uh, Looks like this is a happening area right now. Now the Margaritaville's pool is uh, not, not working. Everyone trying to figure out where to go, and they've, they've discovered. See, here's Botanjas on the bay, the upstairs. I'm not sure if the downstairs got. Uh, Looks like they're letting people park. Oh, no, no, you gotta pay to park still. So. It's Hansis on the Bay. It looks like the. I can't tell if the upstairs. The upstairs is definitely open. You can see that. It says uh, pizza up there. That's not there. Hello. The downstairs is open. Uh, my, my family we used to come here 40 years ago. This was the. Uh, th this was their favorite place to come to, the Tantas on the Bay. No trespassing, so they're not open down here yet. And they probably got some more water because they can definitely see that. They used to have more docks down here. So, the docks used to keep on going and going, but since Hurricane Ian, they lost two extra docks and they just have this left. Space. It looks like people from Margaritaville are just walking and exploring this area. So it's, it's actually, um, you know, if they're just walking, having a drink at one place and walking to the next place, having a drink, that's the way to do it. I mean, there's a new restaurant. Uh, it's, wow, it's, they're having it like Bayside over here. This is interesting. I've never seen this. Oh, there's live music too. Smell, I can smell hush puppies and, uh, and shrimp. Oh, sorry. It smells really good. That's 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 a live two 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 person band. One's playing the harmonica, the other one's playing the guitar. In fact, it could be one person. I can't see it. This thing, they're right behind the staircase under a tiki. That's um, Matanzas Inn. So that's 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 interesting that they have that going on. So we're exploring here, Matanzas Inn. This was one of the first hotels to open up in Matanzas Inn after the hurricane. Uh, the first hotel to open up, though, past uh, the the uh, the award for the first hotel reopening is uh, the Lighthouse Resort coming up. Here. Uh, Matanzas Inn, that was second to open up, but the lighthouse up here, up here on the on the right, this was the first one. This this area, they're just rebuilding. That's that's actually a wooden structure, really cheap. Uh, they put a little roof on, which is nice. But um, the the newer buildings that they built about ten years ago, those are the ones that they reopened. They had a lot of damage from. Uh, This is still one of the areas so you can still park for free. You can get away with it. Um, you're not supposed to park here, but um, I used to sneak in here. So they're, um, they're, they're, they're digging out an area. I'm not sure if they can put, put a pool in there, or they're just going to put a lake in there. But they they dug out the area where their old pool was. I don't know if we can see it, but they're digging up. Uh, I'm not sure if they're at, putting pavers down or they're taking away pavers. They're probably putting pavers there because... Down here, but this is the tiki bar. I normally end my videos here, but not today because I parked down by the other place. And it's happened, there's about 150 people here having pizza, eating. I can smell Italian food, I can smell big stogie cigars. They added a blind though, they added a blind so you can't look into the pool area. That's terrible. Um, it's actually really terrible. I'm not sure if they added that pool for a reason or not. I could have added that blind to uh, keep the, the, the sea out. But you can see here they're working. It could be a temporary blind, but 
it looks like their pool had tons of sand in it, and they just got all the sand out of it. So. But still, the smell of pizza is a big draw, I'm telling you. The, it, it doesn't matter how many pizza stands there are. Pizza, fresh, hand-tossed pizza, smells just excellent. I can never get enough of that. If you're on the beach here and you're sweating, you're hungry, I'm telling you, pizza, pizza is what fills the appetite. Not for long. Maybe it's that olive oil, it makes it come back for in seconds, but... So this is Margaritaville we're on now. You can see that there was a lot of sand down here. And the, uh, the, they, they incurred some damage with some of the uh, caterpillar tractors were plowing up the sand. They ripped some of their... Um, some of the sidewalk uh, conveniences, like rubber and reflectors, they ripped that off. Everything else is okay. Parking is okay. It's just, everyone's having a good time though. You know, that's what Fort Myers Beach is, you know? You're here, you're here to just mellow out and having a drink and being able to walk around. <laughs> you know, you can't do that really anywhere else. You might be able to do that for a little bit in New Orleans, but it's not the same. Fort Myers Beach is you can walk out in the beer and nobody cares. Oh, sorry about that. My fault. Thank you. Let's see, I guess I'm going to stay here. So we're going to go back to where I was. Again, this is the, their pool. And I'm just going to bicycle up here a little bit. There's no, usually there's a guard here protecting or preventing you from bicycling up here. Oh, there's one again. So you can see the pool is pretty, uh, yeah, pretty full of sand. Wow, that was a big dump truck. Wow, oh sorry. Oh, thank you. This uh, old Waffle House, it's, it was called Surf Club after Waffle House. Um, it's, it's a great piece of property, but it's 7.9 million. Come on, 7.9 million. They still haven't fixed the aluminum roof. You can see here the pool. It's empty. You get people in there scrubbing and it's, they're ruining everything. It's, they're adding water to make it easier to come up, but oh. the, they had a beautiful tile job. That thing, that tile job is now ruined. Um, they, they literally would have to remarch site. They should have just pressure washed it and got all that sand up. They should have made a slurry pressure washed it, but well, I mean, they're going to have to pressure wash it still. I mean, I know this. They're going to do two or three pressure washings to clean that up. And they're going to put concrete sealer down, and oh my gosh, it's got to be a, it's not going to look as nice as it was. So, the old beach whale, I don't know what it's going to be called now, but there seems to be some good construction going on. The old 7-Eleven site, there's no construction. You can see tuna skin, see how they fared. I mean, they were one of the first retail businesses open. So my hat's off to them. Smart. I mean, if, if, if your life depends on your cash flow, you got to get your cash flow going. So they have an open store. They may have like two people inside. Um, surf style, they only have like six people inside. So it's a pretty mundane day here. They're charging $10 to park, which is uh, cheap. Not that, you know. And today, shoot. I think it's a beautiful day. Today's the day. Nice and breezy. Doesn't doesn't stink of dead fish <laughs> like it normally does after a hurricane. I mean, there is a, there is a there is a, a slight sea smell, but come on, that's it, that's what it happens. Oh, thank you. So I should go back on the beach. Yeah, I should. All right, check it back over here. Getting too comfy on the sidewalk. We just passed along a guy. Now there was a beach restaurant right here. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. There was a beach restaurant right here. So that's one thing I don't see. I see a lot of like chairs. And I see the remnants of what was a, a restaurant. Oh, 
In fact, let's check out the other restaurant. It's sad. They're using a chainsaw and cutting up their wood, so that, that beach restaurant was completely obliterated, Hurricane Helen. So that that is a big devastation. There used to be a, uh, a restaurant over here. I see there's a big dredge over here now. Oh, and I thought, oh, oh, this is dramatic. The sand is not packed. This must be the old dune. The old dune that was washed away. All right. It's, it's, it's a trying. There's a little alluvial plain here. Okay, so this other restaurant got wiped out too. Um, um, it, it didn't just get wiped out. It kind of like the sand was excavated away. It's just totally gone. It's totally gone. There used to be a, a restaurant right there. See, that, that's where the homemade ice cream, that's where um, goods, the goods moved to. Good thing they jacked up their place. They're still there. So all this land right here is still for sale, including that place. That's no more. That's why everyone is down by uh, um, Matanzas Pass, because that's the new center of attraction at the moment, because now that Margaritaville's pool is not, not there, people are going back and exploring Matanzas Inn and Snug Harbor and some of these other, missing some sites over here. It's the same thing. Playhouse is still there. The uh, Power Gang Playhouse is straight ahead. Trying to sell that for a couple million dollars, that wooden structure. Uh, uh, what looks like a little bit of roof on it. Uh, there was a mobile home. That that is sitting cockeyed now. So they didn't jack that thing up correctly, or if they did, the water undermined it. So that's probably smelling like a shrimp boat factory going on. I don't know if you could live it. I don't think that's habitable anymore. Maybe I could buy that and put it on my real estate business. <laughs> so here's Diamond Head. So Diamond Head had a natural beach that was like I don't know, it just it just naturally formed. It it, 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 it it was like a buttress going out into the water naturally. But after this hurricane, not even Hurricane Ian changed it, but Hurricane Helene, it kind of like, there still is a slight bulge in the beach here. Um, and this is being high tide, this beach is almost 150 yards wide now, which is amazing. This is a perfect area for a casino. In fact, just to the north here of of Diamond Head, that land that's right there, that'd make an excellent casino. You could have a lazy river. I would jack everything up to 25 feet above sea level. Even the uh, lazy river in the pool. I'd put a waterfall in there. Obviously a big casino, two floors. Uh, maybe even a poker lounge. Uh, yeah, and then I would have shops. Maybe even I uh, would connect Diamond Head and uh, uh, Blanca Kai Margarita boat with a little like Monroe or something like that. And you get as many midnight gamblers as I can. That'd be excellent. And I'd build a huge parking garage on the landward side. And I would only charge $5 a day. Or I would comp people if they want to uh, gamble for 20 minutes. If they want to gamble for 20 minutes, then I would comp their $5 parking. Otherwise, I would just charge $5 a day as all. That way you don't have the people camping out. I mean, people would still camp out. They'll bring their big campers and say, oh, it's $5 a day. Oh, God. You know, and if that started happening frequently, then I would have to, unfortunately, I'd have to jack up the prices of parking. If campers are going <laughs> to park in the second story and say, well, I'm camping out here. $5 a day, that's cheap. And I'd have to raise it to $10, $20 a day. But I would still comp them if they paid they gambled for 20 minutes. 
20 minutes is the key though. I have to have a time clock. I guess there was a higher tide this morning that uh, really was a colder beach. I'm looking over at the Nautilus and uh, there was a little undermining I could see, but for the most part, um, it blew a lot more sand onto the parking lot. So maybe the, the buttresses on the Gulf side took a little erosion, a little action but the sand itself was pushed back into their property. So, yeah, it looks like they got more damage from Hurricane Helene than Ian. But uh, that'll change, so in the next couple of days, next couple of high tides, the beach will reform and they'll get a dune in front of their place again. They always do. chance to put it in the dryer. Boy do I regret that because the washing machine got inundated with water so the fresh wash got dirty again. And then I have, you know, after a hurricane, to mop up the house, you use like 12 towels. So I have 12 towels plus today's, yesterday's, and the day before yesterday's um, clothing to wash. So guess what? I'm going to have to hand wash this in buckets and then hang them up to dry. Oh, that's going to be fantastic with tons of baking soda. I'll have to, I'll have, to have like a pre-wash baking soda tub. So I'll, I'll have a tub, just baking soda, and scrub it in baking soda first. Um, and then uh, a laundry detergent uh, tub. I'll have to soak it in that. And then i have to rinse it both times. Get all that, that stagnant water out of there. And then put it on a, a hanger and hanger dry it sun, which I got plenty of in Florida. Ugh, it's just a lot of work. So getting a washing machine, I don't mind taking the wash out and hanging it up to dry, that's fine. Um, but of course, the drying machine, I would use dryer lint sheets. You know, that would make everything smell nice and nice. Hanging it up for dry, uh, you're going to get whatever smell is there. I have a lanai that's screened in, so I won't have birds landing and doing their business on it. That's the one thing you have to watch out about. The birds, there's thousands of birds down here, all varieties. They like to land on your clothes and do their business on it. So you have to have a screened in enclosure. All right. Well, this is interesting. So yeah, I had to come down here just to check it out. Because if I wait until next week, I would lose half the uh, half the thrill. I would miss out on half of the uh, change. And I wanted to make sure I uh, understood what what changed. This next week, half this change is going to be gone. You won't be able to tell if there's any sand on the road. There's going to be just successive rainstorms and pressure washings, and you know the, the town will bring by its sidewalk sweeper and it'll sweep up some sand. I don't feel to tell anymore. But look at this, look at this debris area. This is a, this is a big mess. If they just leave it like this, I mean, I, I, mean I, I don't want, if I'm a citizen, I don't, I don't want to pay for this. Personally, I think my taxes should have already paid for this thing. I mean, one one tax share should pay for 100. I mean, the, the amount of taxes that these this local government and the county government charges, forget it. I see some um, horseshoe crab carcasses in this debris too. I see coconuts, horseshoe crabs, big seashells. And of course, I see a lot of garbage in there too. And birds are starting to nest inside of it. So the birds are, are getting comfortable already. This is like bird habitat. They know that humans won't walk in there, so they're like, right on, man. We got our habitat back. And again, it looks like the beach eroded all the way down to, uh, to where the Publix is down there. 
I don't see any accretion in beach down there. So here's my turn coming up. Actually, I didn't park over here. I parked back um, by the library, so I'm going to have to go back to the place to go. So I get better. Oh, okay. I think it's all sand break. There used to be a public access point right here between these two properties. Of course, I see a lake here. Oh, looks like there's some erosion here. But this part is still pretty fair when I'm walking around. I can move bicycle over here. Yeah, this area right here. Uh oh. That hit something. It's in there. Oh, so I can't go anymore that way. I got this way. Gotta be careful of sand spurs, though, unfortunately. The tide is here. Alright. So we're going overland. It's like a, I have a Conestoga wagon going out west. And this is what the prairie looks like. All 3,000 miles of it. Great. Smarter for those people to wait for the Continental train and or to take a boat from Panama, right? Traveling style. And a lot of people then moved out west and didn't like to move back again. And that in the same like two or three years. Same time it would take taking one wagon train to get out there, people after 70 whatever. We'd go out by the train one day, come back, and come back the next day, or come back next month or something. And then the vacation started. Oh. Right back in civilization. This current coastal reality, I like the building. Uh, if, if I could talk to the owner and he'd give me a good price, I'm renting one of the, the, the units in there. I wouldn't mind it, but I'm thinking about turning one of my homes into a real estate office. I, I have to check that out a little bit, but I, I looked that up online. Look at this big dump truck full of sand. It's ruining the road, but... Uh, I mean, I need to recoup some of my money. I can't be renting real estate space. If I own two homes, if I can put one home to use, and open up a real estate practice out of it. If I could start generating some money right away, instead of spending a million dollars buying a real retail place and uh, renovating it, if I just renovate my house, it only costs like fifty thousand. Uh, I have a lot, of, a lot of parking, and I have to do some renovation of my house now after the hurricane. Anyway, I got to paint it, so it makes sense. Okay, it's saying now the tide is low tide. Heading, heading, it's, it's at low, like with with uh, one 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 group beyond low heading back to high. So that's that's low tide, okay. That was a very fast low tide. It's probably a, not not a real low low tide, just a small low tide. You gotta be careful of nails and glass. Hurricane Ian, that's all there was low glass everywhere you looked look down you see at least three nails or three pieces of glass every time you look down bicycling you're avoiding it like it's, it's hard you're, you're bicycling over them you're praying okay here it is all right well i hope you guys like this video and as long as i don't get a, a ticket I'll, I'll i'll park here from now on once i start getting a ticket though it's back to park down little sterile island Little Sarah Island looks like we got hit pretty hard. Okay. So far, so good. I don't see a ticket. No ticket, good. Alright, well, until next weekend.